that time Bon Jovi made fun of the grunge bands. So it was 1995 and Bon Jovi were releasing their sixth studio album these days, the one that goes under the radar a bit. That word underrated is so overused, especially here on YouTube, ever notice that? But you could say that this is an underrated Bon Jovi album. Not many people really got into it, but there are some good tracks on there. Not a big boombastic Bon Jovi record by any means, but but it did have a song on there, the second single from the record. It was called Something for the Pain. And there was a music video accompanying the song. And this is where Bon Jovi attempted to make fun of all the popular grunge bands at the time. Now, as we know, hair metal was massive in the 80s. Bands like Motley Crue, Poison, Skid Row, White Snake, the list goes on. But it was as we were coming into the early 90s where grunge started to take over. And those big bands that I had just mentioned, along with Bon Jovi, began to kind of not die out, but were getting somewhat swamped by this new grunge takeover. We did a photo shoot um, with, this, with someone for a cover of a magazine, and he was telling us a story of how Bon Jovi came in and said, uh, Make me, he came in with flannel shirt on and he wanted, he said, make me look like Nirvana. And uh, wow. he said, well, <laughs> that's pretty flattering. <laughs> bon Jovi wants to look like us. You know, something's wrong. And that just proves he's a desperate, untalented piece of shit. <laughs> bon Jovi, really big in the 80s, as we all know, with their first four albums. And you could say they were one of those bands who were the victim of grunge. But we come back to that music video, Something for the Pain, and it specifically targets grunge singers Eddie Vedder, Courtney Love, and Scott Weiland. Now, the grunge momentum had not completely died out at this point, although it had slowed. It was much more explosive, 91, 92, etc. Cobain had died the year before this music video had come out. Alice in Chains only had like a year or two left in him at this point and Soundgarden also weren't far away from releasing Down on the Upside and breaking up not too long after that too. And Bon Jovi, it seemed, at this time, were too shy about putting a little F.U. to those bands, maybe. Bands who had knocked them off the pedestal in the previous few years. Here, it seems, they were making fun of how the grunge bands are always, you know, seem so sad and melancholy and stuff or however it is grunge is perceived, and blatantly using a song like Something for the Pain with that title, just rubbing it in even more, right? And Bon Jovi here just kind of having a bit of a dig at them. And as a side note, the video also makes fun of rappers Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Their lookalikes are featured in the video too, but does concentrate more on the Eddie Vedder, Scott Weiland, and Courtney Love lookalikes. There is no mention of Kurt Cobain in the video. Of course, he had passed away the year prior in 94, so the band would probably have been sensitive to that and wouldn't want to put him on there. Don't think that would have gone down too good, right? But as a quick six degrees of separation here, John Bon Jovi actually did write a song for Kurt Cobain's daughter, Frances Bean, because at the time Cobain passed, he spoke out and said that one of the greatest tragedies in Cobain's death was the fact that Frances now would grow up without her dad. I, I am, I'm sorry for her, for his daughter, Frances, that she won't have that that fun that I want to have, have her with dad, my own daughter, sure, you sure. know? And, and that's the first thing that really crushed me, but... That song is called Lonely at the Top, and I've actually got another video on that. I'll put it on the end screens of this one, so you can check that one out. And there it goes, guys, for today's video. Thanks for tuning in. Bon Jovi, of course, they're still here. They're still around today making music. Released their latest 2024 record that's called Forever. So some bands may not have made it through that grunge period. Got squashed a bit there. But Bon Jovi certainly were not one of them. They're still at it, so. Minus Richie Sambora, but still. For me, I'm a fan of bands like Bon Jovi and Grunge. 
don't want to see any of it die out, really. And as long as you're playing the music through your speakers, playing your CDs, it never really dies, right? Cheers, guys. We'll catch you next time.